Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro Russ, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics. Inspire folks like you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We're back this week. It is episode 434. It is March 20th, 2024. We have a packed show planned for you folks. We are hanging out in the Adafruit Discord server. Let me bring it up. So we'll take a moment to welcome everybody to the show. We're streaming all the places, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and X, formerly known as Twitter. Hello, everybody in the chat room. Pedro, what's the link for folks to get invited to the Discord? It is listed right up here. It's discord.gg slash Adafruit. Come yeah. on and hang out with, oh, I forgot how many thousands of people are in this. <laughs> yeah. There, I know we just had a banner awesome. updated with the graphics, but there's so many. All yeah. the different topics from the live broadcast chat to all the help on like 3D printing and CircuitPython, Arduino. Check it out on the Discord. That's right. Saying hello to Rosin, Jim Hendrickson, Dewester, and Squid.jpg. Joining in live this morning. Good morning. Yep. And we can pull in YouTube chats too, and I think Facebook and Twitch, right? Those chats come in. So if you have anything to say on any of those channels, we'll take a look. We'll kick things off with adafruit.com slash free. These are the free freebies that are happening this week until supplies last of course if your order is 99 dollars or more you're gonna get a free pcb coaster with a golden adafruit logo if your order is 149 dollars or more you get that pcb coaster plus an adafruit kb2040 it's a lovely rp2040 de board if your order is a whopping 199 or more you'll get the kb2040 the pcb coaster and free ups ground shipping for continental us only and if your order is $2.99 or more, you get all of that plus a free Circuit Playground Express. All of these get automatically added to your cart. No need for coupons. But if you want to use a coupon, we have them for you today. Good for the next 24 hours. Coupon code BIRDCAM will get you 10% off your total order. Works with everything in the Adafruit shop except for gift certificates and software, which we don't sell any software anymore. And that is the uh, the freebies. Adafruit.com slash free for those details. All right. Last week, we had a nice break. Not really. We just didn't do the show. We still worked. Uh, but uh, spring is among us. Weather is getting nicer up here in the northeast. And down there, it's Florida. So it's always hot. Almost oh. 90, and now it's 40. Now 40, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's how it is. Um, this week's project, well, let's talk about last week's project. Let me get rid of mm -hmm. the um, Yeah, we have a new enclosure, snap fit enclosure for the Memento. That's the lovely uh, ESP32 camera with the OVA 56640 camera. We finally got our hands on, and we have in stock, uh, the camera enclosure kit. That means you get a nice uh, camera plate with uh, NeoPixel LEDs that go in front of the Memento board. So this enclosure encapsulates that and it has a 3D printed diffuser and a little extra ring there if you want it. Some little fancy grip stuff. You have a nice shutter button and you have access to your slide switch, your reset button and all of the uh, ports on the side there. So you have the uh, three pin JST connector that connects the NeoPixel LED plate to the Memento. And you also have an additional one there and then you also have a stem qt port for i squared c sensors of course you have access to your directional buttons your two select buttons your speaker has a little cut out there that's a speaker and then uh, there's a little notch here for the micro sd card slot so you can take that in and out um the diffuser is printed in a clear pla but you could also do it in a white pla and in the app the, the Circuit Python camera app. You can change the colors of the LEDs and the brightness of the LEDs. This is cool for doing those lighting effects. 
and uh, that's rainbow. You can barely see it, but yeah. So it's a pretty fun uh, enclosure for your um, memento camera with LED ring. Another thing I forgot to mention: it has a built-in um, threaded. Thing. Oh my! Screw came off. That's funny. Uh, we saw these uh, threaded uh, tripod screw inserts, and those just uh, get uh, screwed into the bottom here of the back plate. So you have a nice tripod um, adapter on there. And that's the Memento. Here I am. Um, check it out. If you want to uh, download and 3D print the files, they are in the Memento enclosure guide. You can also, of course, print the the um, the enclosure that's designed to for just the bare board. We have that as well. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, we, like I said, we just added it to the uh, that learn guide that we released a couple weeks ago. And Pedro's showing it there. It's not fits. There's no screws necessary for it. Um, the you printed your diffuser in white. It seems to have similar. <clears throat> diffusion. Yeah. Just press this right in. So if you don't want that diffuser for some reason, if you want to burn your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that clicks in pretty good, huh? No glue, uh -huh. just friction fits. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Mine kind of has a loose fit, but it stays in place because it kind of kind of covers the NeoPixel um, NeoPixel bodies themselves. You know what I mean? Like it uh -huh. kind of flips over it. I have a question here from Tyeth on Twitch He's saying, hey, 3D printing bros, is the new case compatible with the strap or lanyard? Or was that, or there, was there one a few weeks ago? Yes, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I was going to add one. You want to add those? Ran, okay. Yeah, I ran out of time. OK, Probably. we can add those. Um, I didn't yeah. think most people wanted it. We didn't rush it out, but we just figured, like, let's kind of just you know, leave out some of the, uh, the super mm -hmm. extra stuff. I almost left out the tripod. Screw. Oh yeah, yeah. But Pedro, added you it. added it, and I was like, okay, that's probably pretty important. Yeah. But yeah, we can we can make another version and upload it to uh, the Learn Guide and all the the STL uh, websites. Yeah, Lanyard would be good because then you can actually take it with you and instead of putting it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's a good idea, Tyeth. Uh, Wix Wire says, "Nice work, thank you very much." We have a step file that's open. STLs are open as well, so you can download those. Um, there's like a little extra bit here. There's this little grip thing. It's more decorative, but it kind of gives you a, an area for your, your arm to rest over. There's just a lot of blank space there because I had to kind of cover. I really wanted to cover this cable for the LED plate. It kind of sticks out a little bit, so I figured I'd cover it by just extending the enclosure this ways. And you know, ca cameras kind of notoriously have that sort of grip area to hold on to. So it kind of gives you some nice ergonomics when you're uh, actually pressing that thing. Um, any other things I can talk about? Um, I think that's it. Printed in different colors. Looks kind of fun in two, two colors. Um, still relatively um, thin. Mm -hmm. Using the same battery, the um, 420 okay. short cable LiPo battery. And yeah, it does require the um, little kit, the LED ring kit. So that does not come with a memento. You got to get that separate. Yes. Uh, but it's pretty dang cool because it just uh, the way that the board's designed. And then it comes with the super small JST cable. Mm -hmm. That's really I was nice. going to include the backing plate because this comes with that enclosure kit. But yeah, like it was really, really difficult. Sense. Because uh, it kind of, the thickness of it kind of covers up the, um, the buttons. And like with an additional 3D print, it was going to be really much. hard. Yeah. It was too much. So I just. No, it is. It, you're already at the limit here with uh, I am. <laughs> pushing down at the button. It's yep. just where it's you know just uh, tall enough to where you still can push the buttons. Yeah. But the, this is, if you don't have a 3D printer, this kind of protects the backing a little mm -hmm. bit. So, yeah. So that's all good. That's the camera, the mental camera. Yep, and then the, uh, it was supposed to be like a features video about the Memento. Uh, yeah. So you can check that out as well, like the time lapsing and the stop motion and some of the other filters that are included 
as part yeah. of the fancy camera. It's like a Python demo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got it. Okay. Next up, we have oh, and the camera kit. The LED ring part of that is back in stock, so you can check that out. Post a link to that. Pick those up because it's definitely uh, makes the build a lot more compact. Because um, before we were just making our own little LED ring and attaching it that way. Yeah, like with the robot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to have a separate LED ring for the design. Yeah. Yep, the Mento is in stock, and so is the camera kit, as you said. And if you want, you can get 10% off your order with BirdCam. Speaking of BirdCam, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's project. We took the, the Memento camera dev board, and we uh, finally are ready to release this project. It is a uh, bird feeder, or wildlife feeder, because it works with squirrels. Um, Paige, you have one. I have one here. Um, spring season is here in the in our hemisphere. It's starting to happen. More birds are coming out, and uh, we were able to get a couple birds and squirrels to uh, feed on it and take some photos of it. So this uses a PIR sensor, which is this white bulb here. And whenever it detects motion, it takes a photo and sends a JPEG to Adafruit IO, where you can view it on the Adafruit IO website via a feed or dashboard. And if you are a Plus member, you can use the email triggers and get an email when uh, this detects motion, takes a photo. We did some testing over the weekend, and we were able to get some nice photos of various animals. Um, I shared some of them on the previous streams because we were still testing it. Um, it has about eight hours of battery runtime with the 2200 milliamp battery, which is in stock now. Nice. Um, you know, birds actually perch and use the little perch here. So that was nice to see. Um, just a couple notes about birds. They're very skittish. Um, they, if you're air, if a bird's not used to your area, um, they'll be cautious and then they'll fly away. So you want to give some time for your birds to, uh, you know, kind of get familiar with this area and, and, and make sure that it's a safe area to actually eat from. Otherwise, you know, maybe they don't uh, show up. But with that, let me go ahead and take a look at our AIO feed. I'm Here's trying to update it. it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there you go. There's my bird. One of the things I forgot to mention is that um, while oh. testing it, we noticed that the camera, even though it's kind of close to the PIR sensor, we needed to kind of angle down. So what we ended up doing was we added these standoffs. I don't know if I talked about that yet, but these standoffs just kind of allow just, it just gives it a little bit like 10 degrees um, of, of an angle. It does it downwards. So you can kind of see a little bit more here. Um, so some of the smaller birds, as you can see here, it might uh, only get its head. So um, just keep that in mind. You're kind of limited to where you position the lens because the camera is kind of fixed where it is with the PCB. And having the PR sensor down here, I think, works because, um, well, that's where it's feeding from. It's pretty close to the uh, feeding tray. Um, but with that said, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the learn guide. This is a collab project with Liz Clark and Brent. So Brent originally started it, and Liz uh, helped us tweak the code slightly so that it um, takes a photo at a fixed focal point, so that it's not having to autofocus. Sometimes we would catch uh, photos of, of out of focus birds. So we figured let's just manually set uh, the focus so that it's always right where um, that perch is. So it's always in focus. And we want to get birds like that. But you have the option to change that up. So um, let me see if I can make it bigger a bit. So uh, we have a couple photos. Here's a photo of an actual bird eating from it. it tends to work pretty well as far as we can. Here's a nice squirrel photo. <laughs> I showed these last time, but that was like the best squirrel that we were able to get. And there's some other birds. There's like a couple birds. It helps when you, when the area already has bird feeders and birds are already comfortable eating there. I think that helped tremendously getting birds uh, to be comfortable with our very colorful. I bird think that's the key right there. Kind of the key. area was completely set up for that. Yeah, some other places, you know, might not have birds because there's other wildlife feeding on the <sighs> bird. So I wasn't able to get any. I had squirrels like all over, 
And yeah. The past couple of weeks, actually when this project started, I noticed that they were disappearing. And then we started noticing that there was a hawk that was always hanging around. Yeah. So we think he, uh, I made the joke. Why don't you just put some hot dog meat on the on the feeding tray? Maybe we'll get a hawk. But uh, Maybe. you don't want to do that, you know. Then the hawk will, like, I don't know, always come in that area. And maybe you don't want a hawk in that area when you have uh, your neighbors have small dogs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cautionary tale. Just keep that in mind when working with uh, wildlife. You want to be careful. All right. So we have everything in stock, which is great. Um, if you do want uh, email actions, email triggers, notifications with Adafruit.io, we do have a subscription pass for one year. Uh, so you can pick that up if you want, or you can just use the free version and just kind of take a look at the uh, the uh, the feed here. That's Pedro's wrist. <laughs> anyway, now uh, the PR sensor is in stock. It's a pretty uh, standard PR sensor. It has a delay and sensitivity potentiometers on it, so you can adjust those as you want. But it basically works like a switch. We have a connector here, a three-pin JST connector that connects directly into the side port of the Memento, and it plugs into the header pins on the PRR sensor. A couple other bots like the battery. It's a nice battery. It gives you about eight hours of runtime. USB-C cable, some heat shrink if you want to use heat shrink, and a slew of screws for assembling the birdhouse area, the birdhouse bit. Um, Brent put together the wiring stuff, so this page kind of walks you through. Um, soldering um, the JST cable uh, to the cable that's included. Although you really don't need to do that. You no, can you don't. You, they, yeah. we sell one. I left it in there just like, it's nice yeah. documentation. Anyway, if you want to extend the cable for a different project, I think that's handy. And mm -hmm. then of course you got a fritzing diagram of uh, where it connects to. Um, so yeah, just kind of running through it. Uh, we have some STL files. We have a step file and a Fusion 360 file available to download. Um, the parts are fairly large. Um, they're going to fit on your mid-sized uh, 3D printing bed if you're doing an FDM 3D printer. So I have the the build the minimum build volume that's uh, required for this part. This is the um, the roof part here in the in my slicer. I like to use Cura as my slicer. Um, so those are the biggest parts I think. And then um, they all print without any support material. They all print as is ready they're oriented ready to print as is with fdm printers Did a little cat animation of the um thing coming together so you can get an idea of where the screws go um one thing that's kind of cool is that you don't need the feeder the house plate and the roof you can just print the enclosure the front and the back enclosure yes. and then you can mount that mm -hmm. to anywhere you want so it doesn't have to be a bird feeder because you set it up on your dog bowl <laughs> yeah 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 um, if you want to it right, right off, yeah, it's a yeah, let me just turn this into whatever PIR mm -hmm. camera. So that's super cool that uh, you can just have a custom backing for this to adjust. And then um, the other point, uh, your measurements for having like the zip tie is perfect dead oh, on. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. You want to hook it up to like a, lamp, a post lamp post or like uh, your fence. Um, these bigger size zip ties work perfectly for that. And then, yeah, just have to figure out the backing for this. I mean, you could just use this one since it just snaps in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Snap. Snap. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty modular in that sense. And then um, there's a nifty print in place switch to actuate the uh, the Memento slide switch. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. That's in, mm -hmm. kind of a newish thing. Um, we did that with the, uh, the doorbell, the IoT doorbell with the Memento. Has a built-in switch actuator with prints in place, uh, so that's kind of cool uh, from a design standpoint. And then, if you want a 3D model of the Memento, we have a we have files on our CAD parts GitHub repo. There's a link there. We have some documentation on how to get started with Adafruit IO if you're very new. We'll show you how to install or how to install how to uh, set up your account. It's free to do so. It's normally linked to your Adafruit account. If you don't have one, it's free to make one. Just start off with devices, and it'll walk you through that. It'll walk you through creating a feed. You just click the feed button, you name it, and then uh, you can start collecting data. There's one note you do want to turn off um, the feed history storage. You just want to turn that off um, because it's uh, 
I forget why, but there's a reason why. <laughs> when you're setting up the Wi-Fi um, stuff, you want to create a settings.toml file, and this walks you through that for CircuitPython. Um, it's kind of like your secrets file uh, for storing your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password, your Adafruit I.O. username, and your Adafruit I.O. key. So you'll need to grab those from the uh, from the website once you create your account. But it's all documented there for you. Uh, here is the code. Again, it's modified by Liz, uh, but it was created by Brent. It's basically, taking uh, it's setting up your Adafruit I.O. Um, account. Well, it's, yes, it's setting your Adafruit account. It's grabbing your Adafruit account, your credentials, connects to your Wi-Fi, um, and then do, 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 initializes the camera. We turn off the display to save on battery life because you're not really using the display in this project. We can change the resolution here um, if you want. You can look at the Pi camera library and find out which resolution you want. I think th the, the value 3 stands for uh, equates to an 800 by 600 resolution. You can increase that all the way up to 2500 by something. And then here is where you set um, the focus. If you want to do autofocus, you can comment this line out or you can change uh, the step. And this is documented in the Pi Camera library if you want to get a better idea of uh, which values work where. We found this value to, in our testing, we found this value works well with the distance of where the perch is uh, for this specific uh, bird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how funny. It just came through. <laughs> the bird? Uh-huh. There it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, we're setting up the PIR sensor uh, to be on uh, A0, which is the JST port on, side, on the side of the Memento. Uh, we're creating the JPEG object here. And then in the loop, we're basically saying um, if the PIR sensor sees some movement, take a JPEG, send it to Adafruit.io. Otherwise, just uh, kind of wait until we see some movement. You get a nice, um, in the we got some nice uh, printouts to let you know what's happening. If you have it connected to your serial console, you can see that movement is detected, it's taking a picture, or it's waiting for movement, or movement has ended. Or if it errors out, it'll give you a nice uh, prompt. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it just walks you through um, making sure that you have all the libraries installed. When you use the project bundle and you use this button here, it'll download all the library dependencies. So that's really nice. And then we just kind of walk through the code uh, here. All good stuff. The assembly just walks you through. Um, securing the PIR sensor to a dedicated bracket that gets secured to the Memento. Really love the Memento from a, a hardware design yeah. standpoint because these these standoffs make it so nice to just attach oh. all sorts of funky brackets Amazing. to your PCB because they're threaded. They're on both, nice ends. Both, on both ends. ends. So it's super, super great to work with that. So we basically get the PIR sensor on that bracket and then secure it to the bottom of the Memento. And then um, we connect it, just plug it plugs in the battery. Same thing, it's a little battery clip, but it uh, gets it gets secured to the the Memento's uh, standoffs that are uh, near the display, and then that plugs in. That's kind of your setup there, and then um, the Memento gets fitted into uh, the front half of the case, and it gets secured with four screws. Although you could always just opt to use two screws, like Pedro did. Um, and then uh, you'll want to set up the, uh, the 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 tray with the house plates with some a little bit longer screws and hex nuts. The um, the house plate has these hex nut shaped um, capture the slots. Like they're like these little recessed areas to capture the hex nut. I just thought that'd be nice to add there so that you don't have to uh, use maybe pliers to like hold the hex nut in. Anyway, it's just a little design thing that I like to do with hex nuts. Uh, pretty similar thing with the roof and the, the house plate. Those get installed with some longer M3 screws and some hex nuts. And then this is where you want to add your um, kind of additional standoffs. These are M3 size standoffs. This helps to angle the, um, the snap fit enclosure so that the camera is kind of angled down towards the feeder. So you get those installed with some screws, and then I'm using some screws and hex nuts for the bottom um, screws 
for the back plate. And then the front plate just snap fits uh, over the back plate like that. And then you have access to the USB port for programming and charging the battery. And that's kind of the whole assembly in a nutshell. The usage page just kind of walks you through uh, some things like, um, you know, it's not fully waterproof. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to use it outdoors during dry conditions. Um, add your own feed. A <laughs> um, little bit note about the birds. Wildlife can be unpredictable. So um, here's how you can view your feed. Wow, that bird. Yeah, that's a nice bird, right? Wow. I think Frank got that. Yeah, it says be rebel. Got those around here. Yeah, it was a nice yellow bird. Maybe it's a pet bird. I don't know. I'll have to ask Brent. Hey, where'd you get that bird? Is it a fake bird? Is it an AI generated bird? We will never know. Uh, there are some ways to adjust the sensitivity and the delay timing on the PIR sensor. There's two little pots there. You can use a, a screwdriver uh, to adjust those. I left mine default because um, I didn't really see a need to adjust it. And there's a dedicated learn guide on using a PIR sensor. If you just want to make sure that it's still working, you could always run some demo code to make sure that it works. I actually did that for the video to make the LED turn green when it sees motion, and turn red when it doesn't hmm. on, the, uh, on the memento. And that is the learn guide. Nice. And we got a little puppy shot here. You get a puppy shot? Oh, that's what you're doing? <laughs> no, I went to the bathroom first. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Oh, you already moved your screen. Yes, here's the bird again. Look how sharp that is. The bird? Mm hmm. Yeah. Really good quality. Yeah, and that's just 800 by 600. I could, right. <laughs> I could make it bigger. So. All righty, we got some Pretty bird cool. gifts. We got a bunny and we got some owls. If oh. everyone's out to eat you, you'd yeah. be skittish too. That is true. <laughs> uh, hawk is less of a danger to your dog than coyotes would be. Okay, that is true. Yeah, that would be a squirrel feeder in my background. Yep, I agree. A squirrel would look, I think a squirrel would be captured better too with the position of. <laughs> With the camera lens. Mm -hmm. Dog. Where's your dog? There is. There's Rufio sleeping. Dog. Okay. Yeah. That's where you probably want to put autofocus back on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get closer. We're sharing an Adafruit IO account, so it's going back and forth between our two. It's so funny. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Obviously, so that... you want to have it close to your Wi Fi um, router. So. Don't want to be too far. Um, I did have some uh, some suction cups originally to hang it on a window, um, but that's what these slots are there for. And Pedro uses zip tie, so you have all sorts of different ways you can mount this thing to a post or your window. Mm -hmm. so, I think it's modular in that sense too. We'll be looking at your notes. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Yep. So if you want to pick up anything to make your own. Bird feeder, bird cam, we'll get you 10% off your order. Awesome, awesome. Cool. All right. All right. I think we're ready for what are you prototyping? All right, let's go ahead and jump into what are we prototyping this week? We are checking out the Pico Doubler. Let me get my screen up. There go. Yep. There it is. Pico. Pico. There I go. So we got this little guy here. Oh. Just the layout. There. All right, cool. So this is the Pico Doubler. Um, we are demoing, demoing it here with the Pico DVI. And just wanted to show the little demo of it running some of the circuit Python code that's on here. So the main project for this is just making a Lego mount for these. So what we have here is just this little plate that holds on to the standoffs. And then on the bottom here, you can see that it has the Lego compatible little plate on here. So we have the studs that can go either like the tubes can go into the uh, studs here or in between. That's uh, very nice. Yeah. 
and that just goes on like that. Um, I'll make a version if you need to have like screws on there. Uh, you sure. Have that as well, and then it also has the uh, 500 milliamp hour battery that also has the little Lego studs on there. Yep. Same thing with that. The tubes can either go inside the plate or the little studs or right on top. Where am I trying to show on the camera here? And so the studs go in like that or uh, in between. So you can have the perfect layout for um, laying everything out. And there is uh, some of the features of this. You have the um, uh, LiPo uh, JST port on the doubler, an extra Stemma port, and then uh, on and off switch on here, and a reset button on the other side. So we turn that on, we can see the DVI demo going. Oh, might help if I turn the monitor hey, on. Hey, there it is. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to mention the, uh, the LiPo battery. It also has LiPo battery charging, so you can charge the battery. I yeah. was looking at the product page, and I searched for charging and couldn't find that on there. So I, I did oh. notice that when I plugged it in that there was a yellow charging uh, yep. status LED going off, but I didn't know if that's what it was doing or not. Yep, it's definitely charging. It's okay. got a charge rate of 250 milliamps to 500. Oh, nice. Oh, wait. Yes, 250. Okay. Oh, I see. It's actually the default charging rate is 500 milliamps. Oh. If you want to do smaller batteries, you can cut a trace on the back mm -hmm. and it'll cut it to 250. So it depends on the battery. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a pretty big battery there, so you want to leave it default. Yeah. I actually That's pretty need to. Cool. So um, I haven't been able to get any more 500 milliamp hour batteries, so I need right. to make another 421. Oh, so okay. The ones that I have a lot of those. <laughs> and I think this is like my last. Uh, 500. You can see it's kind of looking kind of sad here with the mm. <laughs> had to resolder it and then yeah, hot glue for the stain relief. <laughs> yeah, so this really puts a Pico W to use because then you have um, a nice lay, uh, nice pinouts. You have a Stemma QT if you want to just plug and play a sensor, and then you have that uh, additional pair of uh, headers that you can uh, add a a bell so you have access to it. Keeps your project kind of small, low profile, because you don't have to like stack them. Mm -hmm. So really, really yeah, good. Yeah, need to be flat. This definitely works out. Yeah. And then I think there. you have an on-off switch, right? So you actually turn yep. off the thing. Yep, you have an on-off so switch. It just reduces yeah. all the things you have to solder to get it working, which is really I nice. I mean, all the headers you do have to solder on. <laughs> True. It takes quite a while to do. Uh, you know, right, it makes it modular once it's all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all this can pop up. And when I was looking at the product page, I was like, when did they start adding Stemma ports to the Pico? All the ones I have don't have any. <laughs> so that's cool. Is that the Pico W? The Pico W did not have the ones I have anyway, because oh. you know we got them when they first came out. I don't have any Stemma uh, connections on those. Either. Yeah, you're right. I don't see it either. Yeah, I'm looking at the product page here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that Pico has, because uh, it's a, 2021 pico pico yeah. h oh it's pico h not a pico w uh I, I i've got both i got h and w interesting i think the h was just for headers right H is for headers oh <laughs> i mean oh boy <laughs> so at any rate um you do yeah. have an extra slide switch on the actual dvi as well oh focus Maybe not. <laughs> and you can uh, have that set that to uh, your liking as well as what the product page said. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, that's it. Since this yeah. is mainly about the doubler, though, I don't know why I'm talking about the DVI. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just the, the demo. The most features. Mm -hmm. We do oh, have yeah. a, sing uh, a singular, singular, a single. Oh, I need, a, I need to make one for the single one as well. Okay. And I don't know what else. Yeah, I mean, Pops and yeah, they come off. You got uh, it's easy to add like a NeoPixel ring, on mm, the yeah, 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 because they're broken out, mm -hmm. and all the labels are really nice. And you got oh, another yeah. button on there on the side, yep. So, all good things. So, a super cool way to have um, this could be attached to a TV or whatnot, playing like menus. If that's the only type of graphics you need to run, this is yeah, right? so efficient. 
And yeah. then you don't have to, you know, have like a DVD player or a whole Raspberry Pi with Linux running underneath. Yeah, it's nice like nice the shapes like that, like menus or like even the um, graphics that we show here. We have Blinka that shows up, um, text. Uh, yeah. Definitely a super efficient way to have uh, graphics on the monitor. Mm -hmm. Or if you're displaying, you know, you have a sensor hooked up. Really cool way to do that. Yep. And it's a Wi-Fi board, so you can do some Wi-Fi stuff if you want. Yeah, we do have the uh, Pico W um, would be able to do that. Yep. So it's in stock. It's about seven fifty. Um, oh, here, here it is working with the the uh, screensaver demo. Mm. How'd you get that one working? Where's that demo? I know. I think it was a custom made. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have we have the code. You just gotta, you know, tweak the pinouts. It's, yeah, a bit. so Other. some uh, assembly may be required, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that'll be for Pico. next week, and then some of the other ancillary things to our DIY um, HDMI DVI connectors. So mm -hmm. we have the custom ribbon ribbons that can connect a USB or the HDMI. And we have all of the different connectors too. So this one's going from DVI to HDMI. And then we have like a bunch of other different ports too, like right angle, um, left angle, like one going up, one going down. So mm -hmm. tons of different options. Like uh, I think they were used for like drone, um, the POV drone, like the headsets, like uh, that's what those were used for. If you needed to have the HDMI cable going, routing in a different funky place, what all those uh, different angle connectors are for. So you can definitely do that as well. Yeah. What I like about these is, let me turn this off so I don't short anything off. The little latches that are on there is how you uh, swap these out for different adapters. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, look, my favorite HDMI cables. <laughs> yeah, because they're super thin, you know, they're. Again, DIY, so you can choose the length that you want and the uh, type of connector you need. Yeah, I got a correction here. Uh, <laughs> Tyeth is saying that the three pin or, or, or the Stemma QT port is not actually a Stemma QT port on the uh, oh. on the Pico. Let me. There it is. Oh yeah, there's just it's three a three pin. pin. It's like yeah, a debug. It's three pin. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, it's a debug pin, but they, it's there. Wait, and uh, wait. you can see here it's out of stock, but we do have some in stock for the uh, the Pico without mm. the um, the debugging mm -hmm. <laughs> pin or the headers. There's some pre-headers. There's uh, loose headers. That's the non. -Pico There's so w. many variations now. There's yeah. some excuse. It's nice that the sidebar has them all listed here. Uh huh. But that's the ideal one. With the pre-soldered headers and uh, it's out of stock. Oh, but another get these and other ancillary stuff too, uh, in terms of how this project demo is running. Uh, case you design with with the HDMI um, screen backpack. That yeah. backpack. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Yep. And so you have a battery in here, and I think we had a we did a whole project video for this one, I believe. Yes. So that yeah. should be up. I'll link it when the project comes out. Mm -hmm. Cool. This is yeah. a snap fit right. Kind of curious on what's on the inside. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah, it has like a. Oh man, that poor ribbon cable's been uh, <laughs> bent. But it's still working. Yeah. Yeah, it has a US. Uh, what is it? Power Boost 500 or mm -hmm. 1000C for charging. Um. Yeah, they're kind of older boards, but they still work really well. I mean, this is a super compact little HDMI uh, yeah. display. The other one that I was using when I was first testing, it, like you know, the bigger ones that we have in stock mm -hmm. as well. Uh, this one's small, but you have to print it and you know, kind of build it. Yep. Okay. Well, that's it. Prototyping. Nice Lego. Oh yeah. Uh, compatible plate for the new PiCal Proto printer plate. Good stuff. All right. Uh, I have a 3D model of the Pico thing coming out soon. I just got to add the headers to it. I'll upload that to the CAD parts repo in the next day or two. Nice. Okay. All right. I uh, don't really have a shop talk. No new CAD parts yet. Like I said, I'll be adding a new one. 
very soon. So now I think we are ready to do community makes. We'll do a time lapse Tuesday and then community makes. So go ahead and kick that off while I get links ready. Right, cool. All right, so are we doing this week's or last week's? Um, it can be last right? week. Real quick, it's a ball. It's a yeah, last week. <laughs> Last week's community make is this. Everybody's printing those airless balls, so I thought I'd go smaller and print like a ping pong ball, uh, airless ping pong ball. Kids just kept calling it an Epcot, Epcot ball. Really? <laughs> I have not tested it with the uh, paddles, but it bounces pretty good. Um, and all the bouncing, I have not broken it yet, so it should be pretty strong. I haven't measured it, but the thickness of the lattices is you know it's pretty thick so it doesn't look like it'll break on you as easy this is just pla so i'm super surprised that this hasn't broken yeah <laughs> uh, maybe with a paddle it would <laughs> like an intense game but sure uh, can't beat the print time for this uh yeah what it was. i've seen people uh print the full-size basketball one and it breaks on like the first drop yeah, right. because um you know it's just the thing Anyway, all right, so that's what we got there. The all right. Airless ping pong ball. It's pretty cool. All right, for this week, since uh, Easter is really close, uh, a lot of people have been uploading the um, really cool eggs. This one has a little latch on it. Super cool. And inside, of course, Adabot is hiding. Um, so if we take a look at the latch, it has this little bump right there that goes right into these oh, nice. little grooves right here and then this is all print in place too so you have two hinges one that holds the eggs together and then this little guy right here that is acting as the latch so that's a super cool way to uh, have something like that and then the uh little groove here for like having a finger going in there and pop it out Okay. Yeah, so we're using the rainbow filament for this, and it's going from purple to the gold there. And I like these, uh, what are they, w webs, right? Webbings? That's what they call yeah. these. Ribs. The I think ribs. ribs. Yeah. Yeah. To the top there. And this is a really cool alternative to those uh, plastic uh, eggs if you're going to hide any. Although this one's going to take quite a while to print. Maybe this could be like the master egg. The, uh -huh. the toughest one to hide with, you know, yeah, biggest chocolate in it or whatever. <laughs> but it's a cool design. If you could print it in chocolate, that'd be cool. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Here is the design. It's a free download. It's from 3D yes. Tech Designs, and it's a dual extrusion version as well. So here you can see all the different multicolor variations with all these fun, intricate patterns. Even comes with an egg holder, which is nice. Oh, I didn't print it out. You didn't print the egg holder? All right. Well, still have time. And it's free, so it's very nice. So shout out to 3D Tech Designs on Colt oh, 3D. There's a couple different designs as well. I think this is uh, Design B is what it's labeled as. Oh, OK. There's yeah, I'm seeing it. Wow, these are very intricate. And he does include the Bamboo Studio file as well for all the different colors. Mm. Yeah, so this looks like a two-tone, two mm -hmm. two-color. Thing. And it prints in place, as you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. No supports. No supports. Nice GIF. Very nice. That is such a clean print. Right. Cool. And you said you used uh, Rainbow PLA, I believe. Rainbow. Cool. All right. And that is uh, the Time Ups Tuesday. Yeah. The only thing um, that sucked was the. <laughs> I wanted to do a dual extrusion, but it's only as a 3MF file, the Bamboo Studio uh, really? one. So. A lot of people are uploading it that way. I wish you would, you know, upload the STLs as well. No. Can't really open those up. <laughs> well, you should just get a bamboo printer. Just, just get one. Solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. For the longest time, we didn't have a Quirlty printer. Yeah. Now it's time to move on and <laughs> so go with the multi-material. All right. Anyways, uh, moving on. We're gonna go to uh, community makes. Starting off with, not that, a uh, remix of a Raspberry Pi 5 snap fit case. This was uploaded by JH on printables. And it's um, modified for a 7-inch Kipler screen. So this is the Pi 5. 
on it's it it, it kind of gets fast uh, secured to. Hey, there's my cat. Hi, kitty. <laughs> Hi, Winnie. Come on. There you go. Um, the there's like a a, a screen basically, and it uh, gets secured to the back of that screen. So it's a nice kind of uh, add-on uh, remix, rather. They said, I really like the Kepler screen case made and shared by um, Jan Ju 420, but I have a Pi 5, which uh, I did get it to fit here. Not as well as I was hoping, unless I cut some parts out. Um, so they took our case and basically made it fit. So very good. Very nice. After that, we have another case <laughs> for the Raspberry Pi 5. Looks like folks are finally getting their Pi 5s, and uh, they're printing their things out. Um, so fat man, 50, 50 on printables uploaded theirs. Uh, they said they really like the look of the case and they gave it five stars. They added some personalization to it. Um, so he, they, they printed it with, I think fuzzy skin to give it a little bit of a texture on the outside. And they put a shy guy from super Mario brothers, which, uh, kind of looks cool. So you can customize it to your tarts content. After that, we have a make, our first make of the Synth Guitar project, CircuitPython Synth Guitar using SynthIO. This is posted up by JDK87. It says, my daughter loves it, thanks. And they printed it in this lovely pink and black color combination. So it's really nice oh, wow. to see when uh, somebody makes it, and uh, especially for their kiddo. That's a, that's a very uh, involved build. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Super fun, though. Yeah, it is, totally. After that, somebody, Nick uh, Fajaro on Printables, posted their make of the Disney Magic Band Reader. Oh, yeah. This uses the uh, Wiz, is it called the Wiz Kit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the RFID Wiz Kit and a NeoPixel strip and a Feather RP2040 uh, mini oval speaker uh, to make a cool Magic Band Reader for folks that have Disney Magic Bands. And... Um, they said, uh, 3D models are straightforward, easy to print. Appreciate the source. We're available so I can make my own and tweak the base. So they tweaked the base. There you go. Looks very nice. So when you put your Magic Band Reader up to it, um, it, it does a NeoPixel animation and plays some sound effects of your choosing. Still a pretty cool project. Yeah, I mean, you can hook it up to turning a light on. A lot of people like uh, That's right. connecting it to their Christmas tree and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, the Wiz kit is a great piece of uh, kit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has a built-in relay switch, so you can do that, turn things on and off. All right, more Disney stuff. Nick Faro also made. <laughs> Fajaro also uh, printed the Epcot Spaceship Earth. Nice. Ball. This uses the WLED software to make some fun LED animations with new pixel strips. And uh, there's his looking really good. It says, uh, great files. My printer had issues with adhesion, so... Unfortunately, got a gap between the halves of the sphere. Coding was super straightforward. Excellent. So you two can build your own. Moving on, we have uh, a make of our 16 by 16 NeoPixel square pixel display. This uses a piece of black LED acrylic uh, to diffuse the NeoPixels. And yeah, they said, um, put a bunch of sweet patterns on this and upload it to GitHub. And there's a YouTube link as well. So that's cool. Looks like a little pixelated fireplace. Let me see if I can play this. Oh, yeah, let's check that out. There's some hearts. Oh, it has accelerometer on it. Amazing. What? Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if this is WLED or not, but uh, he said they has a GitHub. So this is posted what? up by Cramster on uh, Thingiverse. It's amazing. Yeah, it looks really cool. There's some other demos coming up here. Give it a minute. There it is. Kind of got your kind of game of life sort of thing. Huh. Some uh, some sprites, I suppose. Some kind of cool. There's the fireplace. There's the uh, random stuff and a heart. Huh. Very cool. So if you got yourself one of those flexible 16 by 16 NeoPixel displays, definitely create the, a nice little case for it and a little display. After that, we have a remix of the Tesla Charger Cable Organizer. This is for pole mounting. This is uh, put up by a 
Felbert uh, 78. Looks like it uh, gets secured to mm -hmm. a pole, so it's cylindrical. I think it's the Very actual conduit that that hides the actual um, electrical yeah. uh, cable wire. Ah, uh, yes. Interesting. Yeah, so you can print your own. It fits, I forget which Tesla cable, but it's, it's a mix design. Use it on a canopy that they bought at Costco. Wanted to organize the cable inside canopy mounted on one of its poles. Used a 1 by 34 and 2 32nd inch steel hose clamp attached to the pole. There's a Home Depot link to that. Uh, first time 3D modeling on 3D, so some measurements may be off. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So that's a remix. Very nice. And then last one is another Epcot Spaceship Earth. This one's by Hugh uh, Lar uh, Rawlinson. They post it up there. Make That looks really nice. Ah. I love that filament choice. It looks really nice. And uh, no comment, just a five stars. Appreciate that. Wow. Yeah, it's still one of my favorite um, projects because it's just a fun geometric sphere with LEDs inside. Mm -hmm. really like that. And it prints with no supports. It's pretty amazing. That is this week and last week's Community Makes. Thank you, everybody, so much for posting their makes. Cool. It's really cool to see uh, some of the first time, too. All right. We're getting close to the end of the show. I just want to remind everybody, if you want to support Adafruit and your maker habit, you can pick up some kits, boards, batteries, what have you, and get 10% off your order with our coupon code, BirdCam. Let's check in on Discord. Does anybody got any comments, questions? Oh, wow, Louise. Do Wester has some really cool enclosure designs for some cool. Raspberry Pi projects, Pi 5s wow. with different MVE and wow. USB SSDs. These are really fantastic. Wow. Yeah. If these are if these are up anywhere, um, I'd love to share them on the Adafruit blog. Yeah. These look great. I really love the speaker grill mm -hmm. and the ports. They look really, really mm -hmm. nice. Look at the, like the ball feet, too. Yeah. Ah. Ones. yeah. 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 Those are nice little rubber feet. Very cool. And then I'm looking at the other chats. Looking pretty good. We're all caught up. Okay. Um, tonight we have some special shows. Let's get these banners up. So we do have show and tell tonight, hosted by Mr. And Mrs. Lady Ada. Uh, it's going to be at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can uh, hang out in the Discord server to get an invite if you want to share some projects that you're working on or you're going to work on or that you have worked on. <laughs> and then no Ask an Engineer tonight, but instead we have an Adabox unboxing what? with John Park. I don't have a banner for that, but that's what's going on. It's scheduled. It's happening. Adabox unboxing tonight at mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Eastern time. I see the backup video here. Just in case anything goes wrong, it'll, really? it'll come no. out. <laughs> cool. Okay. So uh, tune in. We hope to see you on show and tell as well. And then I believe JP's doing a workshop tomorrow. Normally he does a workshop show at 4 p.m. Eastern. So tune into that. And then on Fridays, it's either a deep dive with Tim Foamy Guy or Scott. That's uh, Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Eastern. And then on Sundays, we have uh, a stream from the desk of Lady Ada, where you can uh, see uh, the great search with Dujiki. And then on Mondays is a CircuitPython weekly chat with uh, folks from the community and core developers. Tuesdays is JP's product pick of the week. We can get up to 50% off select items. And then back, back, right back to 3D Wednesdays. <laughs> 3D Wednesday. <laughs> Our show every morning at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time. I think we're back next week, right? Mm -hmm. I think we're done with spring nope, break. Kids are back in school. Kids are back in school, at least down there. Mm -hmm. Up here, the kids haven't gone on break yet. They go on break in April. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it started getting empty in the parks, like, I think yesterday or the day before. That's good for you. Yeah. 
you know, not really. It's cold now and we're working. Um, like, yeah. um, I can't get out. <laughs> all right. when it's the least busiest when we're all working. Cool. Well, I have a planned trip to go down there in June. So Yay. just um, what, do you, what do we call it? Like um, for future reference, um, we'll be taking a week or two off in June. Oh, yeah. yeah probably two. In Florida. Yeah, you leave right when the show is and get back when the show is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So two weeks off. I uh, can't wait to get the humid 90 degree weather. Oh, it's probably going to be 100. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's fine. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Shout out to everybody watching live and folks watching the archive. Okay. Thank you, everybody, so much. Like I said, we'll see you later tonight on Show and Tell and next week. But until then, Remember to make, make a, a great, great day. day. Bye, everybody. <laughs>